Hello and welcome. This is the part number nine of MUI series. In this episode, we will build a loading component using MUI Skeleton. And MUI Skeleton is a placeholder preview of your content before the data gets loaded. And we are building it specifically for the data grid component, um, but we could reuse it for other places too. The usage is pretty simple. You'd have to write conditional rendering logics. So if the item that you uh, wish to render is there, then render your content. Otherwise, in the meantime, show loading skeleton. The skeleton itself comes with a props that you can see here. So we have circular, rectangular, all text variants to display different types of skeletons, animations, as well as width and height. You can also build your component to take children props. So it will automatically get the width and height of desired component that will show once the loading is finished. I'll dive into props and talk about it once we are on the APIs page. But in general, it's a very easy component to play with. As you can see now, children is being rendered inside of skeleton. If loading is true, then skeleton shows up with a height and width set obtained from the desired content. If false, then it shows the desired content only. Okay, and let's just talk about props quickly. Skeleton comes with set of animations. By default, it's pulse, but you can change it to wave or turn it off completely. Children to obtain the width and height from the child. Classes to change the styles, but you should be using SX props instead. Component, which has been uh, used for root nodes. And then you got height and width to control the size of your loading skeleton. And the last bit is the variant, which gives you the control of adjusting the shape of loading components. With all that being said, we can open up our VS code and start building a reusable skeleton. We will continue with working on it using a storage page. And if you just came across this video, I highly recommend to check out my previous videos or at least clone the lesson eight repo so you can have a good starting point and link to my GitHub Hub is just in the video's description. So I head over to um, common folder and create a loading folder and inside of it a file with the same name and then once that's done inside of that file I'm gonna run RAFCE command and if you're not familiar with the RAFCE uh, it's just a shortcut to create a functional component for you. Now with the setup done, let's just grab the skeleton import and paste it back to our loading component. In here, we're just going to replace content of the return function with the skeleton. So just get rid of that and type in skeleton with self-closing tags. Now we can import the loading skeleton inside of the storage page and see what it looks like. And I'm going to call it in a random place inside of the return function. Okay, that's done. Um, now we can save it and check it out in the browser. And as you can see, loading takes the whole width of a parent component, but we can adjust it by adding uh, width and height inside of the loading component. So I'll just hard code the width and height, both are set to um, 60. And I'm also gonna set the variant uh, to be equal to rectangular. So variant equals string rectangular. You can also just play around with variants to see how they look like. So I'm just going to change it to circular Then I'm going to change it to text or string. I mean, you can play around with it and see uh, what suits you the most. Um, and also the um, moving on to the animation. So you type in animation equals um, wave. That's going to be slightly different. And just to see the difference, I'm just going to copy and paste and the uh, skeleton component, wrap it with the uh, JSX stacks. Okay, um, now I can save it and check it in the browser. As you can see, there's a slight difference in the loading animation. Um, you can also turn off the animation completely and you can do that by uh, adding uh, animation equals to false. And then the first object has no animation. Now let's check out how the loading component infers the width and height from its child. And to do that, I'm just going to get rid of the um, extra skeleton and I'm going to get rid of the um, self-closing tag. And I'm going to type in children, close the skeleton and I'm going to pass the props. So Kelly brackets. Okay, now save it and we're going to go back to the storage.js. 
And what we want to do here, we want to wrap common button with loading. So I just type in loading and make sure the loading component wraps the common button. Once that's done, we can check how it looks like. So I just um, save it and go to your browser and it looks pretty okay. Um, loading managed to infer the size of the button, though loading itself jumped to the next line, but it's only the matter of adjusting CSS slightly and we don't need to worry about it now. Ideally, we would be using that component when fetching the data from the API, and that's what we're going to mock now. So in the storage.js, um, add in another state, and we're gonna call it loading and set loading state. And as default, we wanna set it to true. And with that, we can add use effect and set timeout inside of it. And after, let's say three seconds, we're going to set the loading to false. So add in use effect, we're going to um, leave the dependency array empty so our timer will kick off every time this page renders and also make sure the use effect is being imported so just add an extra line inside of the return function we want to add our loading state with some conditional logic so add in curly uh, brackets loading question mark and that's right next to the loading component and then right underneath the closing tag of loading component, add in a colon, and then copy and paste your common button component. Make sure whole thing is wrapped with the curly brackets. So the logic goes like this. If loading is true, then show skeleton with button child. So it takes the size of it. And if not loading, then show common button only. We're not updating the loading state, so the loading is always true, but we will do that inside of the use effect by adding set timeout function. So I type in const timer equals to set timer arrow function and then curly brackets and then set loading to false and add in uh, 3000 milliseconds. So after three seconds, our loading state will be set to false. Remember that we have to clear the uh, timer, so we can do that by adding clear timeout function. So we've mocked loading process that renders common button component after three seconds are passed. This is only the example and creating loading component was another setup for the MUI data grid that we are going to do in the episode number 10. Thank you for watching and see you soon.